don't be scared. No need to be afraid. What we're getting into today is uh, a conversation I've looked forward to uh, for some time now. We have joining us on the show the brain behind what you just saw. There's a whole body of work, but let's let's dig right into his mind. Ladies and gentlemen, Clarence Peters is right here. So he's right here with us in our studio. Cinematographer, filmmaker, CEO of Capital Dream Pictures. Good morning, Clarence. Good morning, good morning. We're, we're Thank used you to for seeing, having me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We're used to seeing Clarence shot it. Did you put this, did you put it on this one? No, 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 I didn't. You didn't? They didn't, didn't allow you to put it? <laughs> that's for music videos. This, exactly. This is, this is, and that's where I'm starting off from. Your How locks is, are real, by the way. <laughs> yes, they are. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Should, should we take like 10 minutes to talk about the locks? Then we'll talk about the Okay, after the show. I, I couldn't resist the urge to say that. <laughs> so, um, we all know you for shooting music videos, some of the biggest music mm. videos from Africa. Mm. You shot them. And then people say that there's this new series on Netflix, Inside Life. They're like, first of all, I like the title, Inside Life. We say this a lot and we use this a lot to describe Inside Life, right? And then they see Clarence Peters shot it. They didn't see it like that, but they just saw Clarence Peters. It's Clarence Peters' Inside Life. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, wait a minute. What's going on here? So I'd like you to tell us about, I know you've shot I mean, you don't just shoot music videos, right? Mm -hmm. You've shot a uh, series in the past, but I think this is your first streaming uh, yes, it is. project. So how is life inside streaming for you? How is the transition like? Um, first off, I actually started from stage and television. I, um, from when I was a kid. Everyday people, I think. Yes, I... I would like to correct that. I didn't direct the episodes. I was assistant director. I was continuity. I did a lot of things and a lot of, lot of those, uh, a lot of those shows. Um, and I was pretty young because I started working unofficially when I was eight, and I got paid for the first time as working when I was twelve as a child actor. It was so different story. Um, so my background actually starts from television and a little bit of stage, but mostly television documentaries before the music videos, right? Um, how's life in streaming? It's pretty new. Um, I don't think I've soaked, soaked it in yet. I'm still, we're still in PR runs. I think it's after all of this that I'll probably be able to sit down and be like, okay, all right. <laughs> I haven't taken it in yet. So I don't think I can answer that question 100% yet. But in just in terms of like the, the metrics and just the entire process of going around around streaming it is getting your work on onto a stream platform is not it's not easy it's not as straightforward as people people might think it is it's really it, it can be com uh, complicated especially if you don't have the kind of relationships that you sh you should have especially if you are um trying to create certain types of content all right, um, that isn't like the normal content that people are used to. It becomes very, very complicated to walk around. And you know, you're famed for being responsible for the all of the main high-end music videos that we know from Burner Boy to um, Iris Star, David O. I actually never shot for Iris Star. Okay, I shot once for her as a collaborator, okay, but I've never worked with yeah. yeah, and you know, I, I saw some of your music videos and they come with sophistication and precision. Thank you very uh, much. How did you come about your creativity and your ability to um, be able to interpret those music videos you know, that we see and many appreciate? With music videos, it's a different thing. It, it really starts with brand building, right? You are, your primary job description is to build brands, right? Is to give them a visual interpretation that it, that that they can build on, right? Um, the whole idea is you, you can hear it and then you can see it, right? It's both senses, right? If you're hearing it, then you, you have a lot of ideas in your head of what this person looks like and you're trying to find balance with the, with the visual re representation that kind of cuts across everyone. So it usually always, for me, starts with the brand and be even before the music, all right? What the brand is and then, and then the music and then you start to build from there. It kind of works like a tree and just comes together, especially if the stars are aligned with wherever the artist is at, at the time and wherever you're, you are also creatively at, at the time. So you see the brand in the artists before you visualize the music and 
uh, you know the the interpretation of the idea of it all yes i always have i always have to do that and it it, it really helped help the fact that i also had artists i am um, hard artist at the time right um so i i don't didn't just work with the music videos i worked from the entire pipeline of everything from the sign of the artist to the um, artist development to the music all right and all the way down to the promotion so if you have that the clarity of that entire um, that ent uh, the end to end of everything you think m more or you have the ability of being able to think more outside just being creative about the music videos you can think if i do this then this can actually work with this and work with that for the artist just being able to have that entire um worldview so if i came to you as a raw um singer you can make a brand out of me yes i can <laughs> if um if <laughs> If all the factors are right, yes, I can. Okay. Let's just break it down. She can pay you. <laughs> <laughs> just go straight. Oh, no, no, but but, but, but um, money, money, honestly, money is just about fifty percent of it, right? Because you can have, you can throw all the money in the world at a brand and it still won't work. What's the remaining fifty percent? Or how do you break it down? So the actually, the matrix would be different. <laughs> money is probably about fifteen percent. <laughs> Talent is about fifteen percent. Really? Wait, money is 15 or 50? 15. 15? Not 50 anymore. 15. Okay. All right. The f the fifty percent was if you're talking about music videos. If we're talking about the brand, it's money is about fifteen percent. Right. Um, your talent is about fifteen percent. Thirty percent essentially goes to how hardworking that you are. All right. And the remaining fifty percent is good. Many forty percent. No, 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 no. Fifteen. 50. Oh yeah, many forty percent yeah. would be. Well, give or take. God. All right, it would be God, really. All right, because the stars really have to align align with you. Timing is everything. Timing is really everything. Contrary to what most people most people believe, timing is everything. You know, I'm very curious watching you speak. I I just I, I mentioned earlier on that you came into the studio and the first thing you looked at, or I saw you looking at, was our cameras. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. You were sneaking like, what camera is this? Oh, okay. This is how the magic happens. <laughs> And it just speaks to what who you are, mm. what you do. I was fascinated about what the tech. Um, I hadn't, I haven't been around broadcasting in a while, and just right. wanted to see what the what the new tech was like. And it's it's pretty interesting. Fantastic. <laughs> so I'm very curious about your origin story. Well, about a lot of people's origin story. But I look at you. Uh, I see a geek. I don't know if you've been described as that, but you, your glasses make people think oh, you're the glasses, glasses, man. The glasses, the I glasses. I know. So, but that's not <laughs> who you come across as when you start speaking. Mm -hmm. So you sound like a, a music exec, but then you're also a creative, and there's your hair. So it talks about your Africanness, the culture, you being in tune with culture and the divine. And then you like horror movies, right? So I'm <laughs> trying to piece it together. And then you look like Bob Marley. Oh, there you go. <laughs> no, gosh, I'm confused. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. No, no, but it's quite interesting. So I'm curious. Curious. Um, you started acting. You said you were a child actor, mm -hmm. right? So, I'm what's your origin story? I was literally born into the industry. My father is a musician. His name is Shina Peters. My mother is an actress. Her name is Clarence Chikura. So, I was born, and you know, unlike other people who have degrees and other things, if they say the government bans this thing now, it's clean now. <laughs> It's clean I can't do I can't do anything <laughs> you know, so literally everything that, that, that I that I am is um, both within the artistic side of the of, of of the business and the business itself I've been around it long enough to be able to know that everything works in silos all right um, and um, I try not to sweat the the small stuff but that that kind of it's kind of hard um, so my origin would actually stem from I, th I would say my parents are Your not. Genes, right? Yeah, my my genes is such a <laughs> such You're a cocky, cocky way to put it. To put it. <laughs> All right, but it, I, I've been around it long long enough, um, and just being able to have a lot of uncles and aunties around, and just being able to hear a lot of conversations from when I was a kid. All right. Um, this whole thing about Nepo baby that everybody's talking about. Everybody always talks about like the perks of it. No one ever talks about the downsides of it. And it's a lot of downside downsides to it. Oh shock us please. What is the downside? One just one downside. Um 
Well, in my you're, in my you're even thinking about it, right? No, in my experience, <laughs> in my experience, it would be. Um, I think I was brought up. Uh, um, growing up in the 80s and the 90s things the industry t took a lot of turns right and, and just being able to things weren't as easy as people would think it think it would be um because the industry had to from in my opinion had to collapse to be, to be rebuilt and i was part i was around during that whole that whole time and then having i didn't want to do this when I was in my teens, I didn't want to have, because I didn't want to be compared to my father, my mother, it was too much pressure. I just wanted to play football. And that didn't work out. And but so- I was stuck in Libya yesterday. <laughs> 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 I would have known I was at the airport if I was right. stuck in Libya. <laughs> All right, so yeah, um, um, I, I wanted to play football. And so one day, it's a funny story. A friend of mine, the suspect, his David Peter, his um, my longtime collaborator, he fired sh uh, shot. His shot was notorious, and he fired shot in my groins. And I lay down on the floor, and I told God, if He help me recover from this, and I can count five players on this play pitch that can play better for than me, I'm not playing again. And I got up and I counted ten. I was like, ah, nah, nah, nah. This is my boots. This machine guard. I'm not doing it again. And I went back when I told my mom, yeah, I want to do, I just want to focus on film that I've been doing for a while. She was like, thank God he's come to his senses. <laughs> right? And yeah, yeah. My, my mom is a huge part because my mom supported me with everything that I've ever wanted to do. So that's the advantage to being, uh, all right, and being able to have parents who would say, all right, we understand it and we get it. Mm. All right? Um, and then we would support you with whatever it is that we can, no matter how hard hard it is you know you, you took it right out of my mind if there's anything like that i was going to ask if you know um being sired by two creatives sort of uh, culminated in an explosion in you being uh who you are and such unique abilities that you have uh, by the way did you dance to afro jujushi no pita sigba tiwalodi as a uh, uh, while you grew up i can't answer that question <laughs> <laughs> why uh, <laughs> Because it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you would answer that, but, but I'll, did you get I'll the, pardon the you. Dance jeans, at least. No, 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 no. I suck at dancing. So is that why it's embarrassing? Uh, yes, I suck at dancing. My friends have told me I sound like an orchestra of toads when I sing. <laughs> <laughs> so you should change your friends. <laughs> <laughs> but I produce um, um, a sound engineer, and so it, I, I still kind of got it from both sides. But I, I didn't get the flamboyant sides; so it's just right. unfair. Man. So you can't do it. If I did it here, all your cameras would, would black well, out. Well, at least you can interpret, the, you know, the yeah. dance part, yes. yeah. 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 even yeah. if you could, couldn't dance. Mm. But but talk to us. Uh, talk to us about this. You're also uh, known for not embracing your celebrity status. You're known to be, you know, rather reserved and. Um, uh, you're more often than not behind your workstation. That's the story I've heard about you. Who told you that? It's true, but who? I, 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 my <laughs> sources to myself. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, I am. Um, mostly because I, I don't. Celebrity status are for the people who are in front of the camera. It's they have to be that that way. I stay behind the camera for for a reason i think i have um i think mostly now that i think about it it's probably because of the phobia from my parents and a lot of things that they had to go to by being yeah. in the limelight and it's it's it it wasn't it wasn't all fun all right a lot of it wasn't fun the things that they had to go through personally and in their lives and i didn't want that for myself and um and so I, it still um, freaks me out when people recognize me because, uh, like, yeah, all right. So it's, but n nothing is 100% good and it's 100% bad. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't, all right. So I'm grateful to the fact that I'm somewhat recognizable sometimes, all right. But most times I just would rather not be in that in that space, if that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. It, it absolutely does. Um, there's a lot we could talk about your person. Uh, maybe you could do a, a movie uh, sometime, <laughs> right? But I, I want to get in, into Inside Life. By the way, you look like T-Pain. God, right here. God no, don't, don't say that. Especially not now. Right now. I mean, <laughs> well, you know the T-Pain I'm, I'm in T-Pain. I'm sure you've, you've heard that a lot. 
I've heard I look like T-Pain. I've heard I look like Timaya. I've heard a bunch, bunch of things. <laughs> well, like, you got all the keys. Yeah. But really, a lovely picture there. Thank but you. I want to talk about Inside Life. Um, mm. How many episodes? Six. Six episodes. episodes. Uh, how long did it take you to shoot Inside Life? Uh, we spoke about this before the cameras came on. Um, principal photography was in January. I think it was January 4th, 5th, around there, um, 2021. Um, and then it was just we shot about the first nine minutes of it, and then in about June, July, no, July, August, we shot another 19 minutes. Still in 2021, in 2022, February, we shot what's the rest. We're also principal photography that ended about the 30th or uh, somewhere. I think about the first of February. Um, second unit started about the 15th and went on for about 10 days and then post commenced um, after that. You know why I'm asking? Yeah. There's a tendency for people to watch things and just imagine, we just call people, yeah, let's shoot this thing yeah. and then one week it's done. Sometimes we forget the work that goes into, mm. you know, what we see. Sometimes mm. it's just even 10 minutes. You don't realize it probably took a year yeah. to shot that. So hearing, I just wanted them to know how long it took because I've been looking at reviews. I don't know if you've seen reviews, but that people will say, "Wow!" This, I try not this, to look, but yeah, I've seen sometimes that. it seeps in. Some are like, "This body of work is amazing. This is new, particularly because it has that feel of horror to it. Something you're not really used mm. to in some sense, mm. right?" Some say, "This body of work is great." Some say, "What did I just watch? Is this a music video? A long music video?" Mm. Because it's you, maybe that bias. You might want to address that. And some say, "No, it's because your intelligence is not." at that level for you to understand. I know you've seen all of those reviews. The, 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 the reviews that I, that I found more, more, uh, more int most interesting, um, and first off, to buttress what you're saying, there are productions that are done in a month and are ready to roll out by the next month. Yeah. Right? And it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they, they're not they're not good. It's just different productions work differently, right? And just like different filmmakers work differently. Um, the a lot of the feedback that I've gotten, especially with with story, uh, that um, had been things like, um, yeah, like you said, is people saying that the story seems disjointed and a bunch of things. Um, well, it's weird because first off, there is no conclusion because we were looking at being able to shoot the season two. And so if we, in the world of, let's say, if you're going to follow linear progression, we are, we shot a season, the season three, what should have been the season three of the show. So we built a world and picked a part of it that we could shoot at the time and shot that, mm -hmm. all right? So that there is a tendency for us to be able to go back in time and explain characters in other seasons and then we could go forward. Just give us that latitude in, in space. Um, but also a lot of the questions people are asking, if you watched it again, like you paid attention, there are a lot of Easter eggs in every episode that right. kind of explain a lot of things, but you have to watch it. And it was done on purpose. I really wanted to be able to see what or how audiences, if audiences would pay attention, mm. right? But it's there. Right there. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> uh, well, you're welcome. We're out of time. We, we've explained some of those things to you. I know someone who watches movies with me. The person will be on the phone uh, at some point and then looks up and says, what happened? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to tell you what happened. You have to pay attention. Yeah. So I think that's a cue for everyone. Uh, Clarence Peters, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, Thank you for having me. It's, it's great to see the kind of work uh, that goes on in your mind and you're able to share it to the world. I, I think a lot of people appreciate what they see uh, more. Clarence Peters, uh, celebrity, cinematographer, <laughs> filmmaker, CEO of Capital Dream Pictures. We'll have this conversation uh, again in the coming weeks or months and we look forward to the great work. Thank you, you very much. Thank, Thank you so very much. much. So there you go. Uh, just feel the essence of Clarence Peters, but we have to anchor at this point. So you might want to catch Inside Life and see what that is about. But it's been a show, right? Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kayo Dohikilu. But you're certain to catch Sunrise Daily coming up right after this time out. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow. I am Bukola Koka. Bye.